creation of this bicycle is a global event. Parts gathered from several nations are assembled in America and the finished product is sold throughout the world. If you were asked to name the most important part of that process, you might say the manufacturing of the product. Or you might say the marketing. In either case, your answer would be only partially right because there is another business activity that doubled the value of that product. An activity that employs the second largest number of people in America. An activity that is the focal point of some of the most advanced strategic planning in the modern business world. What activity is this? What activity is common to all of these products? Logistics. We can have the finest products and services, we can have the finest sales force, but if we can't get the product picked, packed, shipped, delivered on time, when the customer wanted it, in the cut, in the quantities that they needed, then all of that is for naught. You may know this field by other names, most commonly distribution. But now you know the name used by the professionals who practice it. It's a field most people don't think about until something goes wrong. But if you've ever gone to a store to buy an advertised product and found an empty shelf, you know the importance of logistics. If the product isn't on the shelf when you look for it in the retail store, it's the logistics system that has failed. So the logistics system gets the right product to the right place at the right time in the right condition at the right cost. Think of logistics as a pipeline, a pipeline that controls the flow of goods from point of origin to point of consumption. Remember the bicycle we saw at the beginning of the program? It didn't get into the customer's hands by magic. Let's reverse gears for a moment as the bicycle flows back through its own logistics pipeline. The people who plan, implement, and control that pipeline are known as logistics managers. They manage the pipeline flow toward one ultimate goal, satisfying the needs of the customer. To do their job properly, logistics managers also rely upon the flow of information through the pipeline. The communication of information is the vital link that ties the process together. Logistics can contribute to a company's improved profitability in two ways, really. One is by directly reducing expenses, operating costs, and the other one is by making the company's position and capabilities more competitive. If every American company improved its logistics operations, we'd perform better against foreign competition. We've got to be as good as the best in the world. So it's managing those supplier relationships, the purchasing function, managing the customer relationships, customer service levels, getting things in the right place, transportation, uh, handling and storing them and inventorying them, warehousing, managing the overall inventory, the inventory and the materials management function, uh, and the information and management process to make this work on a global basis. That's what logistics is all about. The growth is in our field as logistics experts with the global environment. Without us, it's not going to happen. You must have that expertise to move the goods. The sale is one thing, but getting it to final destination is a whole new ball game. In this program, we will help you understand logistics by taking you through the pipeline, examining various parts of the process. Then, we'll explore logistics career opportunities by looking at several categories of employers. Finally, We'll look at the educational requirements and the programs and courses students should pursue to prepare for a career in logistics. Our pipeline model presents an oversimplified image of what it takes to get a product from the point of origin to the point of consumption. 
That's because every manufacturer of a product is also a customer at the end of another company's logistics pipeline. For example, a bicycle manufacturer is a customer of companies that make wheels, seats, and gears. Every industry consists of a vast array of connecting pipelines, from companies that extract raw materials to companies that process raw materials to manufacturers to distributors or wholesalers and ultimately to consumers who may be other companies or people like you and me. With this overview in mind, let's run through the logistics process to see how the wide variety of careers comes into play. We'll start with a manufacturer. A manufacturer must undertake a series of logistics planning activities known as materials management. The first of these is demand forecasting. How much product will customers buy in the future? The marketing department and the company's logistics managers work together. The marketing people use forecasts to plan selling strategies. The logistics people compare the forecasts to the existing inventory of finished goods and then plan the production of new product. Using the forecast and the inventory information, we would use a material planning scheduling system that would go through an algorithm to figure out what would be the best production for each month or each week. Since a plant is always using raw materials, component parts, and other supplies to meet production schedules, the area of procurement, or purchasing, is another significant step in the overall logistics process. Oh, it's very important that we uh, have a close working relationship with our vendors. If you run into a situation where, uh, let's say, you've discovered too late that you are very near the reorder point or just about running out of an item, that you can pick up the phone and call this person or somebody in the office that he works with, tell them that you do have an emergency situation and feel rest assured that you know, they're going to take care of you as soon as they possibly can and as best as they can. Raw materials and parts are received and stored, usually at a warehouse at the manufacturer's plant. While warehouse managers are involved in the layout and design of the storage facility, they are primarily in charge of delivering the materials or parts to the right plant location on schedule. When a finished product comes off the production line, it needs to be packaged. As a marketing tool, the package is a form of advertising. From a logistics standpoint, packaging serves a dual role, damage prevention and effective material handling. You've learned how logistics managers plan and manage the flow of goods inbound to a manufacturer and through the production process. Now we'll learn about managing the flow of finished products outbound to the consumer. Holding inventory costs money in interest rates, space, in equipment, and in people. The manager's goal is to control costs, while at the same time maintaining sufficient inventory to allow the company to provide outstanding customer service. Inventory control, you, you get involved in the, every aspect of the company. You're obviously impacting the accounting or the finance side of the business. Um, you're obviously impacting what the distribution folks have to distribute. Um, you're, you're working with the sales force when it comes to new business to make sure that you have the product on hand when a customer orders the product. One of the most critical elements of logistics planning involves the strategic placement of a manufacturer's plants and warehouses. Creating the vision of what that distribution network was going to look like, where we wanted our distribution centers to be, how large should they be, what technology should we use to run them, uh, what would the staffing requirements be? What inventory levels should we maintain there? How much was it going to cost for us to do all of this? Usually, a manufacturer will ship finished products to its own warehouse to await shipment when the customer orders it. Yet increasingly, manufacturers are finding it more efficient to use the services of public warehouses. Logistics managers at a public warehouse need to be flexible. Primarily what we're doing 